Hey guys, Elliot Shostak here. Hope you are doing well. So a question that I get asked often in my work with singles who are looking to get into and keep and maintain a healthy, loving relationship is, should I continue to keep someone who I can hang out with, who I can spend time with, who is a friend with benefits um, on the side while I go ahead and actually date and look for others, okay? So again, when you're single or you're divorced and you are alone, right? So to speak in your mind, you might have friends, you might have family to spend time with. But as I've talked many times in these trainings for you, something that someone who is single often feels, and the reason why I know this is because I was single for 11 years before I um, found my partner, is this feeling of why me? Why am I alone? And these others can be with someone and just spend quality time and have a good time with them, right? Why do I need to go ahead and suffer and be by myself when there is this certain someone, be it a guy, be it a girl, who I'm friends with, who I can go to a movie with, who I can spend time with, who I can sleep with, who I can enjoy myself with, knowing full well that I do not want to be in a long-term relationship with them. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? So again, especially when you're feeling that sense of ostracize, I was going to say ostracization, but I can't even say it, so it's not a word. Feeling ostracized by society for being single, getting asked annoying, uh, shitty questions constantly as to, oh, what's going on with your love life? And um, uh, can you tell me when, who you're dating or why didn't it work out with this person or that person? So when you have this guy or gal or you know got a man or woman by your side and and even if they're not quote unquote your boyfriend you appear to be normal so you give off the appearances so that this way the people in your life can a shut the hell up and not bother you with stupid ass questions and number two, even when those people aren't bothering you with stupid ass questions, you could still go ahead and feel, oh, okay, at least I have this. Okay, at least I have this. So let's repeat the question and let's give you an answer. Now, first and foremost, anyone who is my client knows that I don't tell people what to do. They join the program, they learn the concepts, they get the support for me in the weekly Q and A's and from each other, and we grow together. You can ask me questions and I can give you advice, but I'm never telling you should or shouldn't, right? Because that's only a pressure that you put on your head to say, oh, okay, this guy who knows a lot about relationships is telling me to do this, so therefore I must do that. And then you blame yourself and say, oh, I did this because he said so, and that's the reason why it didn't work out. Had I done that? Anytime that you have the word should in your brain, it's going to cause you to suffer. Okay? So I really should have phrased the words, could I keep a friend with benefits who I know isn't the one while I date others? That's really how I phrase should, <laughs> could phrase it, okay? But that being said, when you are feeling this sense of loneliness from a biological perspective of needing uh, to be with someone, whether it's sexually, whether it's to have that intimacy, 
or it's from the societal perspective of everyone has somebody and I don't, we all understand why you would keep someone like this, quote unquote, on the back burner, so someone who <laughs> is on the side, okay? And sometimes in those situations, now I don't wanna say rarely, sometimes there is a glimmer of hope that maybe this person who I get together with for movies and I get together with for dinner and I get together with for an occasional uh, <laughs> um, booty call, maybe this would work out. Maybe this will work out for me. Maybe, right? There's that glimmer of hope. So understand the reasons why you are in this. Because if you don't understand the reasons why, you can't answer this question for yourself, okay? So I'm going to give you an example that, I'm gonna give you two examples that helped me tremendously on my career path as well as in the weight loss uh, realm. And this will help you understand very clearly why you may or may not want to get rid or keep this friend with benefits. Are you ready? Okay, can I get a thumbs up from somebody who's ready to hear me answer? Okay, while I take some more coffee. So, I'm working for a, an agency a while back, and I get a call from my then boss to come in early the next morning. And I have the pit in my stomach because I know what's going to happen, okay? I get let go. I get laid off, you know, changing of the position uh, for whatever reason. And at first, it's extremely normal. And maybe in another video, I'll share with you how I handled it because it was, it was pretty cool, actually, how I handled it. Um, but... Um, what wound up taking place is your mind immediately goes to pain, right? This is oh, my livelihood. I'm not going to be able to, to support my family. How am I going to support myself and the lifestyle that I'm accustomed to? Blah, 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 all the things. Okay. Now, even though at first it's painful, it provided a lot of clarity for me because it put me on the trajectory to do that which I love to do, which is this, okay? So had I not been let go, had I not been fired, I would not have been able to be having this moment with you in this time. I would not be able to meet with singles and divorcees and, and those who are divorced and those who've been single for years and those who've been to therapists and haven't seen the results that they want to get when it comes to their love relationships, I would not be able to be doing this because I would still probably have been in that position doing my thing, always having in the back of my head, always having in the back of my head that there's something more to my life always having in the back of my mind that I really wish I could be doing what I want to be doing. I really wish I could be helping people in a deep way. So getting fired, although it's very painful for someone to go through, it sometimes wakes you up out of the stupor that your mind is in of, okay, this is how life is going to be. This is how life is going to be. This is how life is going to be, right? So let's relate it to the person who you have the friend on the side with the benefits and you're trying to find the right one. You're trying to date somebody else. Okay, so we'll go out to the movies. Okay, all right, good. Or we'll, we'll go to dinner, right? And I'll take him to a social function. I'll take him to a wedding that I get invited to so I don't feel embarrassed. Okay, I'll take her to a, a wedding so I don't feel embarrassed. And I don't feel alone. Okay, I have, even though I know that she's not for me, even though I know he's not for me. Okay, all right, so I still did it. Huh? Now, what happens if, boom, she dies? Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty severe. 
or what happens if boom, he dies. Very painful, right? But it will, it, you'll go through the pain process, obviously, okay? But it could happen. And it'll wake you up. And then you'll have two choices after you get over your morning. Do I find someone for me? Or do I find someone, again, to keep on the side? Now I'm going to make this question real freaking scary for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? What happens if you know you have a month to live? A month. And you have two choices in front of you. Keep the friend with benefits or spend time with someone who you know you would want to live and spend your entire life with. I guarantee you that that decision is going to get very, very clear for you. It's just like the getting fired. It takes you out of the comfort stage. It takes you out of, okay, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, I can just keep this, right? Because the mind likes comfort. The mind likes to stay, things should stay the same. Things should stay the same. So it doesn't like change and it fears change because it, it's not trying to hurt you, but it's, it's, it's trying to, it thinks, the mind is thinking that based on previous experiences, when I went through pain, when I tried to make changes and it didn't work, so if I try to make a change now, it's also not going to work and I'm also going to experience pain. Okay, so it's not trying to hurt you. But anyone who goes through my program learns how to optimize their mind for dating. And a way to do that is to get very clear on what your mind is doing. But even more important, what is your goal? What is your goal? Is your goal that you want to be in a healthy, loving, long-term, sexually fun and exciting and active relationship? You can share your life with someone whom you really are. You don't feel judged. You don't feel accused. You feel safe. You feel peace. Do you want that? And is your friend with benefits providing that for you and can be that person? So if you feel that that person could be that, then have the conversation with them that you'd like to take it to the next level. That's what confident people do, okay? Confident people understand that the quicker that they come to their vision and goals and decide on it, not just think about it, no, oh, I know what to do, but <laughs> no, you act on it and you have the conversation and you're prepared to say, if this does not work after this conversation, thank you so much, bye-bye. If the person who is your friend with benefits actually steps up to the plate and you step up to the plate and say, you know, we've been hanging out for two, three years and we've been doing all these things together. I think that I love you and care about you and would like this to be my long-term relationship. What do you feel? And if you get from them, <laughs> or yeah, why don't we talk about it next week? Your answer is there. There is your answer. You don't have to start thinking in the back of your head, well, this person needs time to think about it. No, you can tell right away. If that person's eyes light up when you ask them the question, it's like, yeah, I've been thinking the same thing. Let's go for it. Awesome, you have your answer. That's success. Now, let's talk pizza, okay? So, you have your goal, and your goal is to lose 20 pounds. You put on 20 pounds, and you want to lose 20 pounds. You know that the one food Okay, by the way, I'm giving you a lot of self, um, self stories here because this really is my downfall. You know that the one food 
that if you were dropped off on an island and told that you could only have one food for the rest of your life, let's just say that food was pizza. For me, that's pizza, okay? You go ahead and you have your goal, you have your vision board, and you have a picture of yourself thin of how you look, and you tell yourself, you know what? I am going to lose this weight. I'm going to go to the gym. But I can't give up pizza. So every day I'm going to eat between four and eight slices of pizza. Now you will look at me and say, dude, you're screwed. Okay? There's no way you're going to lose the weight. You can work out all you want. You can um, eat all the other healthy foods that you want. When you put on those pointless carbs that are filled with really very little nutrients to fuel your body, you basically are sabotaging your goals. You're taking away from your goal. Yeah, you might lose a little bit of weight here and there. You're not going to lose the 20 pounds. And if you do lose the 20 pounds, it could take you 20 years while you're eating four to eight slices of pizza a night. Do you understand? And you don't have that time to waste. Carpe diem, my friends. Enjoy the moment. Seize the day. It is right now. This is your life. Are you who you want to be? That was a song by Switchfoot. Okay? So it's similar to the friend with benefits. If you have the goal that I mentioned before, that you want to be in a long-term, healthy, loving relationship, that's peaceful, that's enjoyable, and you have this friend in your life, even though you have all those reasons why you have this friend, it feels better at social functions. It feels better to have someone to go to dinner with and to be with intimately. And I get it. I get it. It makes all the sense in the world. But if you know this isn't for you, and you continue to do this, then it's like eating the four to eight slices a night while trying to lose weight. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? Okay, so you have a decision that you need to make. Again, I don't tell you what to do. I don't tell my clients what to do. But I can guide you. And that's one of the major, major components of the Find the Right One coaching program that I have for singles and for those who are divorced and for those who are experiencing these incredible breakthroughs. So I had one woman who is a psychologist. You might have heard me talk about her. She joined three weeks ago after a breakup that she had with someone. Very, very confused, very, very unsure a couple of these side situations going on, just like we talked about. But by understanding how your mind works, getting the support that you need to make these mind frame shifts to a healthy view of love, it builds up your confidence to the point that she emailed me yesterday. I can see inviting you to my wedding because I know it's going to happen. This is her goal. Everybody has different goals, whether it's a long-term relationship, a marriage, whatever it is. And I know I'm going to get it because I'm so clear and I'm so confident in myself now that it's just going to happen for me. And in fact, she couldn't join the uh, live Q&A that we had last night because she messaged me this morning, had a fantastic date number two with, um, with someone. So my clients in general get the fact that, yeah, making these decisions could be tough for you. They will be tough for you only because your mind thinks it's going to be tough. But really, if you knew that you're only going to get closer and quicker to that angle of the healthy, loving relationship, you'd make it this second. Okay. So I hope that I was able to answer this question for you. And I wanted you to know 
that the other night I was on my friend Joe Mignon's podcast called A Guy Thing. And he's an incredible dude. And we talked to singles and we, we really spoke about from the heart what it is that people want in life when it comes to a love relationship. And what I was willing to do was offer a discount for those who listened to join the Find the Right One coaching program at that discount. Two people joined immediately, and I have about another six hours to offer that discount. So if you enjoy these trainings, and you know that I will speak to your heart and help you because I believe that your success is my success, go ahead and message me or click on the link that I'm going to put up ahead and join the program that's changing the lives of many, many people for the better. Okay, guys? Have an awesome weekend. If I don't speak to you, rock and roll. And um, I believe in you.